Matt Wyckoff uh, announcing he was leaving today. How, how are you shaping up at center and overall in the offensive line as well? Been very pleased in spring. I thought we made some huge developments in spring. I thought some guys are really coming on, uh, playing well. The young guys are really developing. Uh, that position, Remy's had a tremendous spring. Nabu played center the whole spring, has had a tremendous spring. Uh, really happy with him. He played some guard too, Remy has too. Uh, I think both those guys, you can see being here, doing it. I think I'm really excited about that whole group on the offense. I mean, Dewberry's had a good spring. Layton's had a really good spring. Fathery, Basantis has been awesome. Uh, I mean, they, that whole group, I'm trying to make sure who we go through right here. Aki, like I said, Layton. Of course, Shanahan wasn't in there because he was, he was coming off his surgery. Uh, of course, you get Bryce back. Deuce has been really good. You get Hunter Herb back, coming back. Dewberry, I said, crown over. I, I, he's really made some strides. Uh, Chase has really done a great job. Nate Booz had an outstanding spring. Uh, Layden, Shanahan going Strickland, and Colton Thomas for a new guy. And of course, you had, you know, you'll get Trey Zoon back. You'll get uh, Hunter Herb back. You'll get, uh, of course, Bank has been banged up. He'll be out there. I mean, what's my missing? I feel like I'm missing Bryce. Oh, Shanahan. And of course, I ah, can't keeping Bryce. Of course, we'll get Bryce back. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. But that, those young guys, not just playing and knowing, but physically really good players. I'm really excited about that group. Are you, are you at about 74, 75 scholarships? Somewhere in right there right now. now. And then what are the intentions? Do you plan to be at 85 or just wait? You're and see never, I mean, August? like I said, depending, we'll go into portal. We'll see what goes on when the portal opens up Saturday. And we've got our eyes on guys and guys that are in the portal and things that go on. We'll be we'll be very active in it and have been with some of the visits and the other guys coming in and we'll go where we got. But, you know, usually I hate to say that. Like I said, the whole time at Florida State, the most we ever had was 81. The most we ever had was 81. We usually stayed between 78 to 80, 81, 82. And we would always have guys we thought were really legit, and sometimes your walk-ons earned that earned those spots too. But if we go to 85, we'll go to 85. That depends on how that portal goes. Second row, David. And times we've been here, we've been probably same thing, 81, 82, somewhere in that range right there the whole time we've been here. And then always you have two or three walk-ons you reward who've done a great job and earned scholarships and done things. Jimbo, how do you measure success in the spring, and what has it told you in the past about maybe what the fall could look like? Fundamentals. At the end of the day, more football games are lost than are won. And you've got to be able to understand how to you know, get your alignment, your assignments, your techniques, and be understanding in your communications, and giving yourself a chance to be successful, and then let the talent take over in, in how you play. And I've been very pleased with the physicality, the energy on both sides. I'm talking about both sides. The practices have been really competitive, really physical, uh, very uh, energizing, as I say. It's never, I mean, it's, it hasn't been the, you haven't had the, okay, you'll go through spring. What I've been the happiest about, and we still got two today and tomorrow before we have the spring game, you start getting to the end sometimes, those guys get banged, you get bruised, you have one of those, you know, sometimes you got to keep pushing them. You know what I mean? We haven't had that. We've had great energy in practice, and I think that's a, a sign of leadership, maturity, and I think just energy and guys come competition. And I've been very pleased with that part of how we're going about our business on both sides of the ball. I mean, and in special teams. Guys have been very energetic in special teams, and I think we've taken some good strides there too. Coach, we'll go back behind the lights to the left. Hey, Jimbo, you talked about the offensive line, um, but what other areas maybe has competition maybe <laughs> surprised you in the spring? I don't think it was ever surprising. I think all that would happen. I think the young receivers coming in have done a great job. I think uh, – of course, we know getting uh, Evan back in practice the other day was really good. But Moose was having a good spring. He was doing a, he was doing a good job. Uh, Anias, back, you know, he, he got banged up a little bit, but he was having a really good spring. But I think the young guys, I mean, the, the two new entry guys, I think Noah Thomas I've, I've been, has had an outstanding spring. He's really jumped out, played different positions, plays, things he's done. Uh, you know, that whole group of guys, making sure I haven't missed anybody on that group as I'm saying it. But, I mean, like I say, cottrell has been great. Jalen Preston's done a really good job. Uh, Evan, of course, has been Micah Tease. Those two young guys, man. And then Noah. And, then, of course, I know Nias and Evan and uh, uh, Moose have been really been outstanding. I mean, I, I'm very excited about that group. I think the tight ends have pushed each other. Been a really good battle. The quarterbacks have went at it. They're back. The, the running backs. Amari Moss, Moss was tink, dinged up a little bit early with just a little hammy, but he's been – he had an outstanding scrimmage the other day. I was really pleased. Ruben's coming on nice. Amari's done a great job. Ernest uh, in that group. Uh, defensive line, uh, the emergence – I think Walters had an outstanding spring. Really has jumped. His, his size, his quickness, his athleticism. Albert Regis has been really good. Shamar Turner's been outstanding the whole spring. I think he's been really – I mean, 
dy- know, dynamic in a lot of areas. I mean, Dendy's growing. Diggs, of course, is leadership. McK- I mean, all those guys. I mean, I, mean, I haven't been to Shamar, Eni, LT. I mean, all those guys. The, the linebackers, Coop really – I thought Coop played really well in the scrimmage the other day. I was really pleased with him. Uh, Martrell's making strides. Uh, the two young linebackers, Sanford and York, I've been really pleased with. I mean, they've got picking it up and, and making plays. I mean, those guys are smart. I've been – been productive. Tony Grimes has been a great addition. Like I say, him and Sam been out there every day. They're there every day. A couple of those guys like Javon and have been nicked up, but they're, they're, when they were there, I mean, him and those guys, it's a really good group. Bryce Anderson's, I think, had a super, super spring. Been really good. Gilbert was having a really good spring. Is back. He'll be, he got dinged up for a day or two, and he's back. Uh, Damani, Jacoby, Jared. I mean, that, that group, I've, it's been a really competitive group. I, I can't sit here and say guys aren't being competitive. And different spots, moving them in different positions, whether you're a nickel, you're a dime, you're a free, you're a strong. Because those all positions all got to be interchangeable now. They're all ha- like receivers. You're a slot, you're an outside. You move in by plays. You move in, you know, where you're at by tight ends in the back. I mean, like, you know, sometimes tight ends are here. You have to be multifaceted as a player now and all fat. And then wherever you're at on offense or defense. And I like the competition. I mean, there's a long way to go, man. And I think and then we're just keep stressing the fundamentals of things. But the competition level and the energy level, I've been extremely pleased with. Have been. Front Kickers right. and punters have done a real good job. Front right. Snappers. <laughs> Go ahead, Cole. Jimbo, you've mentioned some players who were going to miss part of the spring due to injuries or because mm-hmm. of they have surges at the end of at the season and stuff like that. Is there anybody who you could say right now won't be available for Saturday? I don't know about Saturday. Oh yeah, for Saturday, all the same guys. That but, no, been, anybody yeah. on top of the guys who you already mentioned? Uh, maybe eighteen. The tight end. He got a, he had his ankle turned the other day in the scrimmage. Was having a good scrimmage. Uh, Donovan Green turned an ankle. Other than that, I should be pretty pretty clean, I would say. And then with you mentioned the transfer portal opening up starting on Saturday. With your philosophy, is it just simple supply and demand of adding a player by losing a player out of the same position? Yeah, you get the best players it... you can to get the best 85. Our, our philosophy is get the best players on the field and create the most competition within your team and the best players play. I mean, it's that simple. And, and also fastest can they get, you know, you know when, when you get into the transfer portal, you get into a lot of things. Do they fit you? Do you have, and the other thing is how many experienced guys do you have at a position or how many starters coming back? Because most guys that transfer, why are they transferring? They want to play. Well, if you got ever guys that are playing and have returning starters, you have multiple returning starters. It makes it tough at different positions. And but you have to say, show them the opportunities that you know you can have more. You, the way you can get guys the ball, or the way packages on defense that you can be like a star because you can be a starter and play just as many plays as a starter based off the different multiple packages you have and how you have to play. So I mean, I think those things. And you need starters. You'll need starters. You'll need guys that can that can fill in and, and compete every day. And, and where you're at. So and I think other thing, you got transfer. Well, you got also the academic parts of things. When you get into transfers and guys haven't graduated, or you have to get into majors of what your graduate students are, when they're coming, does your school accept that many hours and make them eligible? Do they get ineligible? See, that's a big factor that no one talks about. Some schools don't accept other, I mean, a lot of hours. So if a guy's so far along in his degree and he has to be at 75 or 80% and your school doesn't accept that, you can't take them. I mean, there's all there's facets of that too that go into transfer portals that guys don't people don't talk about, especially when you're a very high academic school. And A&M is a very good academic school. So I mean, those, those are all facets that go into transfers and what you're trying to do. Front left, Travis. Jimbo, uh, two questions. First, any status update on Tyron Smith? Any what? Uh, stat, update on Tyron Smith if he's still. No, I, I mean I think he's planning on going back. Going back, okay. And then uh, I know some conversation about uh, maybe in the future the possibility of. Uh, teams scrimmaging other maybe FCS teams for a spring game instead of with is there what are the pros and cons of that in your mind I don't like it I'd rather do my own scrimmages set my own scenarios create the own scrimmages in which you have and then he goes then what do you do well how much am I going to play my quarterback becomes like a preseason game do I play my starter do I not play my starter do I play my backup you can get him that I mean so how do you ever help your starting guys sometimes too I mean there's a there's there's pros and cons to it I mean, if somebody can give me a strong pro to it, okay, but I'm, I just well like what it is because now you can control your scenarios of who you play, how you play, who gets hit, who doesn't get tackled, who, who does whatever. And you can get work without getting them on the ground and things like that. So in that aspect, I mean, I, I would rather control it myself in that aspect of what you're trying to develop in your team because unless there's a significant financial value to it or something of that nature, I mean, I don't know the – Advantage. Maybe you get a guy some game time that are young guys, but you're you won't play your starters. It'll probably be like the uh uh what are they called the Hall of Fame game. <laughs> some of them don't Pre-season, play or they'll yeah. get in the NFL, they'll get one series or you won't get them. Now you play all the young guys, which I mean if you if that's your object, then it could be good. So I mean there's a lot of different avenues to look at it. 
As it, if it comes about, then I'll think about it harder. <laughs> Second row on right, Ola. Yeah, Jimbo, a couple things. Um, first of all, have you been able or have you wanted to uh, spend any more time or be more involved with defense this spring than always have. spring? I'm always involved with that. Every meeting. We have every meeting with defense. But no I, I know every, every facet of everything we've ever done but and what we do and how we do it. Okay. And then uh, Max talked about uh, there being a lot more – motion and deception on uh with what they're doing is that a lot of bobby's influence or is that it's, something it's, you've he likes wanted? that and we have in the past we've got an older team you got an older team you got more experienced guys how they line up how they shift how they motion because understand something when you shift in motion you can be deceiving but you can deceive yourself because remember something the defense is going to change too so when you get older guys and they can process when you shift a tight end and motion a guy or a double shift or lift, we, I can, we can go back to my days at LSU. Every play we did was a motion. And I'm not saying that Bobby has a lot of that in him, and we want to do that. But as you get, if, you, if you don't understand what you're getting or you have experienced guys to understand the adjustments to make the calls on the run, because now the line's got to change. As soon as you shift, they shift. You've got to make different calls. You've got to make different things. And as our t what we are excited about, we have more experienced guys, which allows you to create more deception and more of those things, which I think is really good. The left third row, Carter. Yeah, Jimbo, what, what can fans expect just from the spring game as far as a format, how different we'll, we'll go be? probably like a one offense and a two defense versus a two offense and a one defense. You know what I mean? Those would be on teams. I like to create teams. I don't like to go offensive, defensive scoring. I like to create a game typical scoring situation because it makes it real. And we'll punt. We'll do everything. We just got to flip the end. We always got to be going one way. We can't run into the we can't run into the fences down there on the other end when we're working on the stadium. So we'll always have to flip. We'll kick it and then flip the to get the field position back or whatever you got or back them up or whatever. And then we'll uh, and play. But we'll play it as a scoring the scoring part. We'll kick off. We'll punt. We'll do everything just like you would do. In a uh, in a normal game, except we will have the, uh, like I said, I'll have the one offense and the two defense and the vice versa. You know, them guys on the team, so you can at least have a, a competitive game type scoring situation. I ha I hate all the, well, defense gets three points for a stop and two points for the. I feel like I'm playing flag. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you get it, how much for an interception or whatever you get. I mean, it's a real game. I mean, let it transition into the next part of it. I never did understand those scores. Why well, defense only gets two for this or three for that. Sometimes they need to get more <laughs> for things they do. So we'll try to make it as game oriented from a scoring position as we can. And y'all will draft teams? No, nah, we probably won't this year as much. Uh, depending, we, we possibly could. We're debating that right now, which way we want to go with that. And then uh, Monty was talking about Connor for a little bit and, and talking about how he kind of has the swag to him. He mm -hmm. compared him to Johnny Menzel just from a no, he ain't never met John. How in the heck would he say that? <laughs> I'd say I mean, from a com that's a great thing from a confidence standpoint. Yeah, but from a confidence and just how he carries himself as a guy who's only been here for a year, coming into his sophomore year, is that pretty rare from what you've seen? No. When you're, when you're a good player and you feel good about yourself and you're confident in yourself, you, you carry yourself that way. I mean, you carry yourself with confidence, not arrogance. And I think that's what he means. And, and the good players that I've ever been around, the great, and the great, the great ones, whatever you want to say, they believe in themselves and they carry themselves that way. Especially if you're the leader and you're, you're snapping the ball every day. If you don't, there's not many people going to follow you. And, but also they ain't going to follow if you're arrogant. I think he has a great mix of that he does a really good job of being confident and not arrogant. You know what I mean? And what he does and how he plays. Brett, you wrap us up. Not every coach has his own terminology. How are y'all treating that with you and Bobby Petrino? Is it a kind of a mix of terminology and what, you know, or? We're trying to keep, listen, terminology ain't about, uh, it ain't about us. It's about the players. See, if your players, your terminology has got to be similar for your players. You can take any play and you can take anybody's plays off any team and put them in your own terminology. And you try to do that as much as you can for not for us. It has nothing to do with me or Bobby. It has to do with the players. Because when they have to learn a whole new language, what you've done, I just like, all right, write that piece you're going to write right now, write it in French. <laughs> How fast are you going to write it? So you're it? using the same terminology. We're trying to use as much. Now, there's new terminologies involved in things a lot. But you try to keep it as, as, as similar as you can with the things that are the same because it makes it easier for the players to understand. It's a language. You know what I'm saying? And that's the way for writers to say, all right, you write yours in Spanish, you write yours in French. How fast are you writing it? <laughs> I have trouble enough writing it. Well, I'm, my point is, that's my point about terminology. You, 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 and there's new things you add. You add to an offense all the time. There's new terminologies. But you try to keep it as, as the basis of things you want to keep as close to the, for the player so they can, they'll have to think, they can react and understand what language you're in. And there's always things you add and subtract. So you'll keep a lot of it and there'll be some new, both. All right, Coach. Thanks for your time.